Welcome to Adapting Class, and thank you for deciding to this watch this video. So I'm going to do a couple of series. I call them Ultimate Enclosed Review Series. Basically, I will take a content area and then I will dive in into test taking strategy, critical questions, how to answer tricky question regarding those content. This is Adapt Enclosed. This is the first question. It's loaded, but it's straightforward. It's not a hard question. It's just a critical thinking question. Which medication should the nurse prioritize? Of course, administering first. Which one will you give? A nurse is preparing to administer medication for four clients. There's four clients. The medication are as follows. We have a morphine. We have metropolol. We have tropholin. And we have what? Heparin subcube. You have to know them. If you don't know them, check adapt and class our videos uh, on pharmacology. But you, I'm giving you an idea that this is for pain. Metropolol is for hypertension. Teofolin is for asthma management. Eprim 5000 is to prevent DV, DVT. Which medication should you prioritize? You have to look at the condition and you have to know the pharmacology of that medication. Patient has severe pain. Do you give that patient medication? Opiate. Patient has hypertension. Do you give them metropolol? Patient has asthma. Do you give them trophilin or heparin subcure? Which patient should you give? As you can see, acute pain is an acute problem. Patient is in severe pain. We need to address that problem as soon as possible. Hypertension. The medication you're going to give is going to take some time to work, so you have time, right? If I'm, I, I want you to worry about hypertension, I would say severe hypertension. I would say encephalopathy, signs of encephalopathy or confusion. There's nothing like that. Teofilin, you have to know your content. It's used for what? Long-term management of asthma. It's never used for an acute problem. Therefore, this patient is not in acute distress. Every 5,000 sub-Q is for prophylaxis. It's not for um, management of somebody who has DVT. So you preventing DVT is prophylaxis. It's giving every eight hours you have time. Therefore, give the patient to the patient who is in severe pain. We need morphine that can act right away. Same stra strategy. What is the nurse priority action? The client is prescribed what? Digoxin. You have to know this medication. I've chose medications that you have to know. 0.125 milligram daily for what? Heart failure. Before administering the medication, the nurse note the following assessment data. Heart rate, 54. Potassium, 3.2. Digoxin, 2.3. What will be your priority action? Prioritization 101. If you don't know what the joxin and all the key aspects about it, check out that and click. There's a video there. You will love it. Administer the joxin, what? As prescribed, notify the healthcare provider of the assessment finding, go the digoxin and reassess the heart rate in an hour. Administer the potassium supplement before giving the joxin. What do you think? Think about it. Go to your content and ask yourself, digoxin, what do you know about it? Heart rate less than 60, 70, and 90. Since they give you 54, it's lower than all of it. So we assume this patient is an adult. You need to hold it. Potassium 3.2 is too low. If you give digoxin, it's a problem. Digoxin level is 2.3, it's too high. If you give it, it's going to be a problem. The best thing, you cannot give the joxin. You cannot hold and reassess the heart rate an hour later. If you worry about the heart rate, this is abnormal. This is abnormal. You have three abnormal stuff. You can't give the joxin anymore. This is a red flag. Three red flags. You talk to the doctor and make an assessment. Giving potassium, it's not going to help. There's three assessments. You're fixing one. So, right answer is to notify the provider of the assessment finding. Three, the client, what do you know? Go back to the password, the last portion of the question. Which laboratory resource should the nurse administer? Anticipate, a client receiving furosemide of 40 milligram IV for acute heart failure, develop what? Muscle cramp, generalized weakness. 
I tell you, answering questions is full of buzzwords. Use your buzzwords, think about it, and then don't rush, right? What is the problem? Go for the buzzword. The buzzword say anticipated, right? What are you going to do when I'm taking, I'm rewriting the question on my own. That's why I sound like that. What would you do when I'm taking Farasimai 40 milligram for heart failure and have muscle cramp and generalized weakness? This uh, signs of hypokalemia. Despite you know your content that Farasimai causes hypokalemia, these are signs of that. What do you anticipate in the results? This is normal, abnormal, normal, normal. You need to go. Um, you should expect low potassium. Patient is telling you, I have muscle problem, muscle cramp and generalized weakness. Right answer is number two, potassium level 2.8. You may be able to pick the answer because you can see it's low. But I'm trying to show you where the answer is in the question is staring at you right there. What is the next best action? A client is receiving continuous infusion of vancomycin. The next draw a trough level prior to the next dose. So you draw a trough level. You want to see how low is the level or the baseline now, which is reported at 25 mic per ml. Normal range is 10 to 20. As you can see by reading it, your trough is higher than your normal range. Will you give the patient the medication? Your trough is too high. You're not going to decrease the infusion rate. No, you got to wait until the trough is normal. Administer the dose and document the results. The trough is too high than your normal range. Hold the dose and notify the doctor. Draw a peak level to verify. You draw a peak after infusion of the medication. Content right there. Therefore, we're going to hold the medication and call the doctor. A client with chronic cancer pain is prescribed morphine sulfate, extended release PO, uh, every 30 milligram every 12 hours. Pay attention. Sometimes you see these hard questions, but it's not. There's a bunch of words. I have extended release 30 milligram PO Q12. That tell you this is for long acting medication. I have immediate release 10 milligram every four to six hours PRN for breakthrough pain. This is for acute pain in, in between. The client reports a breakthrough pain of three hours after the last dose of extended release. You give them the long acting. Three hours later, they're reporting new pain. Therefore, you should give them the immediate release. It's a long question. There's nothing to it. It's a test-taking strategy and thinking about it and say yes and no. I'm not trying to trap you, but you can look at it and say, I've given you extended release and you have pain. Therefore, for breakthrough, I give you the breakthrough medication. What do you expect? Administer the immediate release, which is used for breakthrough. Don't increase the dose of the extended release. It's called extended release because it's long acting. It doesn't, it doesn't act right away for acutely. Issue, reassess the client pain an hour. Patient is in pain, give them the pain medication. Contact the air care provider for a new prescription. No, you have an order for extended and a breakthrough pain. Give the breakthrough pain and that's number one. Does that make sense? Number one is your right answer. A client with type one diabetes prescribed regular insulin NPH to be given at breakfast 7.30. The nurse understands that the peak effect of regular insulin will occur at what? Don't let them confuse you. And don't let me confuse you. Type 1, regular insulin, MPH. And we're giving him at 7.30 at breakfast, right? The question say, you understand the peak is going to occur when? MPH, you know, is 12 hours, right? There's no peak for it, right? It just... You just give it to them. No, there is a peak for it, but the peak is not right away, right? That's why it's BID, so it's 12 hours, right? The peak is uh, usually, because it's BID, so what do you worry about? It's, it's going to be a long time. 
right? The question is asking you for what? The peak effect of a regular insulin. In the regular insulin, usually the peak will occur between like two, two hours or two hour 30 minutes. Therefore, what do you think should be the right answer? Just by looking at it, even if you don't know elimination, right? 7.30, 7.15 cannot be a peak, right? 8.30, this is too short, right? That's an hour later. This is uh, appropriate, two hours and a change. This is too far away. So how to see? So 10.30 and 12.30 is when the peak is going to occur. Warfarin therapy developed a new infection and started on amoxicillin. The nurse recognized that this combination may, one, increase the effectiveness of warfarin, increasing the risk of bleeding, decrease the effectiveness of warfarin, increasing the risk of bleed and clotting, have no effect on warfarin therapy, causes a potential interaction leading to a decreased level of amoxicillin. Content here, antibiotic may, most of them, affect warfarin metabolism. How? It goes to the liver and prevent the liver from breaking down warfarin. Therefore, the level of warfarin floating around is very high. Therefore, it increases the effectiveness of warfarin. When the effectiveness of warfarin increases, you have what? More bleeding. And that is your right answer. So it increases the effectiveness warfarin because it decreases breakdown of warfarin and you're going to have more bleeding. And so number one is your right answer. Number two is your wrong answer. And then it does have effect. It's not going to decrease the level of amosocine. So this is the first video. Continue to follow up with this series. You will love it. Different content every time. Short questions, short duration, seven or eight of them. You may love it. Take care of yourself. And if you like it, click on the like button, share with your friend, and then subscribe to the channel or join our membership. Good luck. Take care.